showtime. Dress normally today. Hope everyone had a great, happy, safe Halloween. It sure was a lot of fun yesterday. 43, you know, it was 43 degrees yesterday, 54 degrees this morning. It feels so much better. No one. Let's go see if he has a tongue hanging out today. Hmm. Oh, it's hanging out all right. <laughs> it's hanging out all right. Good morning. I'm Jamie Cooper. This is Athens in the AM. And you know what we're so proud today? Welcome Coach Cody Gross to the program. Yeah. Hey. Hey. show up today. Yeah, set aside a special day for you. <laughs> Jason Parnell joins us this morning. New Life Assembly. And Dr. Tyke Miller, Innovative Eye Care, over-indicated, as always, up here on a Wednesday. Over on set two. A guy trying to steal my name this morning. <laughs> Colonel, are you a Colonel, a General, or what? I'm just an average citizen. Average citizen. And Freddie Leonard, a Sunday school teacher and sales manager. What'd you tell me? I said, are you from here? And you said, what, about the South? Jamie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I said I wasn't born in the South, but I got here as quick as I could. All right. There you go. <laughs> he, has written, he has written this book. We're going to hear all about it coming up later on this morning. This portion of the show brought to you by Hometown Market. Special around the paper right now. There's one near you. Great folks to do business with. All right. It's already started. I heard them this morning talking about it. Bama fans are irate. Why? Not me. Because we're number two. No. <laughs> Deal with it. That's fine. We're number two. We'll be number one. It's in the okay. end. It's okay. It's Thank okay. you. Ain't mad about it. I'm not mad at all. You can live about. with it. I figured Georgia, <laughs> after meeting Notre Dame, like I said, they're going by what's happened now, and Georgia has the better resume as far as what they've played and won. Because Notre Dame's in the, in the top four, so look at Florida State. <laughs> what, he got two wins? So. Zach, exactly. does Notre Dame belong in the top four? <laughs> this uh, year. They, they're... Well, I, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I don't think so. Of course, no, they, no, they don't. Down. But hey, right now, nothing we can do about it. <laughs> Let's just keep this thing going. You know, it's a long way off. Ohio State, Ohio State was number 16 two years ago when they beat Alabama. Jack, Jack, one more thing. Mama, I'm sorry we scared you yesterday on TV. <laughs> I did not all have right, a car. Hey, y'all didn't hear this story. Oh, Zach, yeah, said, yeah. Zach forgot to get a costume to the last moment. We said, all right, Zach, wear that neck brace you're famous for wearing. He comes walking in here with that on and a, and, a uh, and a walker. Well, I get up here and say, Zach's been in an accident because he's an accident victim. His mama passes out because she thought he'd had a wreck on the way to the station. <laughs> so she said, don't you know, hold these there. Do you folks believe everything I tell you? That yeah. shows people are watching and listening. <laughs> if I was only a preacher. <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be scary. That God has scary. good aim. Watch it. <laughs> All right. Televangelist. <laughs> I won't let him do that, Jason. No, he's threatening that. You need me to live to you one day. I'm almost ready, man. Man, I think it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you better love me more. Church <laughs> it'd be plenty of right. I can't even get to teach Sunday school. Why do you encourage him? Yeah. <laughs> as soon as Freddie's out the next time, I'm taking over class. On Sunday. Okay. All right, let's get this party started. Here's Gloria with the weather. You know, God has good, good aiming, too. Watch that lightning is what I tell him. All right, weather is going to be a little bit different than it was yesterday. We have 40% chance of rain in the forecast. A little drizzling taking place out there right now. But as far as temperatures, 54 degrees right now. It's going to reach a high of 67 tomorrow. 40% chance of rain still in the forecast with your high of 75. So at least warmer temperatures. Then it jumps to 80. We have 40, 40, 80, 40 as far as the chance of rain. So the next four days, just keep an umbrella close so because we I will see. <laughs> 40, 40, 80, 40. There you go. It is. And I want to stop just a moment and say this. You know, I've been working on a project uh, briefly. It's called Lunches of Love um, that we are going to be supplying food for children in need. And the first school I'm starting with is East Limestone. So I've been on Facebook, you know, asking people for save your bags. Don't throw away those bags. I need them to pack food in there. Lo and behold, I walk in this morning and Greg Britton has just surprised me. And just what a blessing you are. 4,500 bags delivered to the station. That'll cover the three schools on my list for at least two to three years, and I can't thank you enough. All right. Thank you, Greg. So we'll be telling you all more about See that you. as we progress with that. So that uh, we'll go from there with that. Yeah. Cody, good morning. Thanks for remembering us today. Good morning. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Last game of the season. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. 
Bad luck on you not being here last week. I told you I was a good luck charm. You don't know that. You don't believe in that, though, so there's no truth to that. I'm not sure that would have helped us. Jason, I know you've been bottled up waiting to get up here. and You've been gone a lot, haven't you? I have been gone a few times, yes. Yeah. Been to the Bahamas, Africa, getting ready to go to Ecuador in 11 days. Oh, so. my. Wow. Why can't you guys ever stay here? The gospel calls. Right? I, know, I know that's everybody's excuse. We've got to go somewhere. Go to Africa. You know, Tim Anderson, he's Someone always gone. You're it. always gone. Hey, I'll get any work done here. Well, we try. That's why we have church members. Delegate. That's right. You have church members. We teach, we train, and they do. Uh-huh. Y'all know, must do a good job, honey. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think we are. All right, anybody <laughs> back here? Dr. T, how was Halloween for you? It was great. Yeah. Staff dressed up. Scared me, so <laughs> they had a good time with it. Yeah, we got some pictures we'll share with everybody in just a moment. First, let's go to the man right now who's been known. He's going to set a Guinness Book of Record for how many pieces of fried chicken he can eat in one time. One setting. One setting. We're going, you, we're going to do that. I'm going to get. I'm going to get him up here. To furnish all the chicken you can eat in a minute. Okay, in a minute, each bucket. <laughs> well, Just get him a here. bucket. After I hear, welcome to ZT the 11 Sports <laughs> brought to you by KFC, the best fried chicken in Athens and Limestone County. Hey, you got work? Bought a bottle of Carolina Reaper. It had ghost pepper. Carolina sauce in it. Reaper. Reaper. <laughs> Carolina Reaper. <laughs> not Reaper. I thought you said Reaper. Reaper. That stuff ain't legal here. Reaper. Carolina Reaper. Hot sauce, Carolina. <laughs> and I tried it yesterday. Ooh, it will light you up. I need to get some of that and eat, and eat Did that. Did you say where that girl is? What was that? San Diego? She ate one of yes. those ghost No, pepper. Denver. Yeah. Denver. Denver and ankle. threw up on the set. <laughs> threw up on the set. <laughs> not a good idea. That, okay. Yeah. Anybody out there can get me some of the hottest, whatever, our pepper buds from the cake. That's it. Carolina That's Reaper it. is some the hottest stuff. No, Zach. No, I Zach, we want Zach that. to pass out on this show. <laughs> That's your goal. What was Mama say? Or ta- <laughs> yeah, she would pass out. Ta- or, or he wants to tase me. He's, he's wanting to tase he's me. He's tried that, times. too. Zach, what's it like to go to the bathroom after eating one of those things? Is it a blowout or what? Not too much. It's not too much. Jamie, <laughs> hey, Coach Gross with us today, and he'll talk about <laughs> last week's game. I'm changing the subject. That's changing the subject. <laughs> what a segue. You can't make that stuff. <laughs> y'all, y'all, it's not, when you go to, I mean, when you eat that stuff, you pay the price. <laughs> well, that's my question. Why would you eat it? <laughs> oh, it's good. I like it's it. Hot good. It tastes good. It's got to oh get tasty. It's the good. after things that come with it, Zach. Hey, well, let's, let's go. Let's, let's, can't even let's talk something. Hey, Coach, <laughs> talk about their big game. Their last re- you said their last game is their last um. regular season game. They'll play at home. They'll have senior night, so I know Coach will have a bunch of seniors to talk about today, and then they'll be in the playoffs next week, and he'll talk about that. East Limestone, we hit two well, weeks going to tell me everything he's going to talk about, why not he talk to him? <laughs> well, you, I, I would interview him if you let him. And, uh, <laughs> I could have stayed home again. <laughs> East Limestone, uh, we had our chances <laughs> last two weeks. Now we got to beat Tanner and hope uh, Lawrence County and Russ will lose. Coach will talk about that tomorrow. But we have senior night tomorrow night. So anybody wants to come out tomorrow night for senior night. And then also another big game, a bunch of Ardmore kids that I was close to the last four years, their senior night against West Limestone. Okay, so it's night. senior night all over around here. Let's move on something. Well, okay, there you go. <laughs> hey, if you hadn't been able to stay up with the World Series, which I wish I could oh, have, game tough. seven tonight, stay up and, and you know, Watch be it. dragging tomorrow. But game seven tonight, it'll be awesome. So you don't see me in game sevens. Those are exciting stuff. The polls came out. And as expected, Georgia number one, Alabama two, Notre Dame three, and Clemson is four. <laughs> Alabama fans, don't worry, it'll all come out in the end. It'll be fine. Uh, Auburn lost a big part of their team, Cameron Petway, for a while. He has a stress fracture. Don't get too excited. And right? he'll be out for an extended period of time. I'm not getting too excited about Auburn, you know. Hey, the Browns are the Browns. You, it's only the Cleveland Browns can do this. A.J. McCarron was traded to Cleveland yesterday, but Cleveland forgot to send in the, the stuck trade info five minutes late, so they canceled the trade. Oh, he don't, Cleveland. He don't get to he go. He not want to go to Cleveland. They're terrible. So stay in Cincinnati. Well, Cincinnati ain't a whole lot better. Well, he's better off right now because their offensive line. All right, enough about terrible. you, Zach. Let's talk about Back to you, one subject, me. What I did yesterday <laughs> on Halloween. Let's go to some photographs right now. Oh, what are they? Oh, my them? goodness. That's me on the right. Uh, Isn't she a cutie? Uh, Cruella. That's right. Man, that outfit. I'm talking about mine with the tongue. Kind of the hit of the day. <laughs> what else? That's Manny in the middle. 
All right. Joe Derrickhead oh, and Dusty's. Pastor Dusty's yeah. daughter and she grandchildren. Had, she had a great outfit. She did. Dusty Joe did. She dressed as an old lady, made a, made a walker. Zach, you could have used it out of PVC pipe. They were at Brook Hill even too, and there was Lincoln number one. Uh-huh. Uh, Good-looking photograph. That's me on the right. Yep. Uh-huh. Coleman Valley Dental. Smiles. Valley Smiles. Not Coleman oh, Dental yeah, not anymore. Coleman. He still works there, though. Yes, Alan Coleman. You'll find him there every day. Speaking of him, that's him on the right. <laughs> <laughs> there we are again. Yeah, they always dress up like, like that. They did decades. Yeah. What else, Brad? Yeah. He's still a I just like going as a dog. I mean, that's just my life. A I don't dog. know what else You're to come up with. You're right. They don't, they don't call me Rover for nothing. <laughs> That's Joseph with Joseph the mask. Joseph scared me Joseph, yesterday. Yes, he scared me too. I he walked in bare. I didn't know who it was. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, my sister said Chris didn't come to work like that. <laughs> that's, a, that's the crowd that was with you. I'm going to start charging admission. I mean, look at the no, crowd. And we got awesome. results. Then we got one of them. That's awesome. Yeah. There they are. There's the new results rehab. Where I'll be having my. Uh, they were Disney characters. Yeah, I will be taking some. I hate to inform you folks that are loyal <laughs> viewers every day, but I'll be taking a couple of days off here before long. I'm going back in. Traditions. Traditions again. Miss Dana. Yeah, all traditions this time, yeah. That's the new matter. Dana over there. Yeah, Dana Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got to go back in and have my knee scoped. Hmm. Someone needs to bend it more. Hat. You had that before? September 12th, I had that hat. Took that place, yeah. You have it on you knee or what? <clears throat> no, no, no. I just tore some cartilage at youth camp back in June. Uh, Not as young as I used to be, I guess. Now, why don't you boys remember that? Well, mine happened 40 years ago. It's just now <laughs> taking a bet on me. Please, come on, cut me some slack. We'll have to take a break, come back and play Coach Gross's favorite game. Oh, yeah. Judge Jamie, y'all, hang on. moment. <laughs> Judge Jamie. Jason, I get fired up every time I hear that. I bet you do. All right. If you can't hear me, you can after you go see my buddy what? Zeke at One Love here. I got <laughs> seven locations. Two, three, 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 eight, four, four. Jamie Doss, we'll talk to you later, but this is the way we play this game. Jason, you played before? One time, yes. And you're back. Okay. I did not win. Cody wait. is a multi, multi winner, so is Dr. Tyke Miller on the end. Wrong <laughs> answer. Pretty? I don't know if you're one or not, but you know how to play. Right answer. Here we go. You playing to win a game? You think of buying a sausage this morning? Uh, oh, that's such a great game. <laughs> now, <laughs> now show me what the big winner is. You I've never seen anybody walk out with anything. You get that? <laughs> Pork no grain for gravy or fried Dra pasta? That's the favorite. We well, have the favorites up here on this program, and yes. all you people playing worldwide, especially here in Athens on oh, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> we here did we go. start out with Here is the pasta. first question. I've scanned all the papers this morning. Do y'all remember the Oakland athletic player from Huntsville who Bruce said, Maxwell. So you know uh -huh. him. I don't know him. Couldn't pack, couldn't he see if he walked in the door wouldn't know who he a was. A waiter in Huntsville yeah. of not waiting on him because he kneeled. He was the first baseball player to first kneel baseball. the last oh. What's the latest on him? He got domestic abuse. He pulled out a gun to a delivery person, <laughs> and, now he's, and now he's been arrested in Arizona, which where he lives now full time. So he wow. made this whole, he's got, he's got <laughs> Well, he's, they claim, the city councilman in Huntsville claims it happened. Well, he's got a problem, evidently, with eating. He can't get nothing right with his food. Anyway, the special election we're having here in state of Alabama, y'all know we're going to vote for Roy Moore or Doug Jones here in December, and then we vote for some local people. Tom Fredericks is running for something over there, Mickey Hammond's place. How much have these special elections this year cost Alabama? Way too much. 2.5 million. 1.2 million. They're going to try to do away with them from, from now on. The governor will just appoint someone. Five million. Until the regular. Fifteen and a half million <laughs> Good dollars. Good grief. That <laughs> we, the great state I, go. <clears throat> right. Only me. coach will know this next answer. Only the great. coach will know the next mm. answer. Uh -oh. I'm about to do awesome, high school. Fresh. It's on the front page of the Decatur <laughs> Daily today. You better let him see it. you a big it. office, man. Yeah. Wow. I heard he got, he got <laughs> a big Coach Cody style. Gross will have the biggest office at the school. <laughs> I read that. Right. Athens, city of Athens population right now is up 16% since the census in 2010. What That's is good. it? 
And having a big church here, you might know this. Yeah. What, what is it? Was the population? Population of Athens. It's about 25,800. I'm going to give it to you right on 25,393. <laughs> That's good. This appearance on the show, 3,000 of them will be going to New Life Assembly. Awesome. Come on. <laughs> but here's a question for Coach that only he would know right here. As of last week, how many students attend Athens High School on an average daily basis? Oh. Only I would know that. <laughs> um, Your only hope. We'll say uh, 1,025. I'll let you have it. Very close. 998. There you go. That is very, on. very That's good. good Actually, they have 1,100 students. That is very good. That's mm -hmm. why you are the coach of Athens High School. Yes. Eagles, huh? All right, here's one. Only Dr. Teichmiller may know that. Here we go. <laughs> Ain't right. he right. ever eaten at Big Bob Gibson's barbecue indicator? Yeah. Right yep. down the road from you. Right. Chris Liddy, done our show before. <laughs> yeah. He's made them really fun. When did the first restaurant of Big Bob Gibson's open indicator? 1972. 1950. Yeah, I was going to say 56. They that. Evidently, he didn't know the answer. That's, that's 1925. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it was that. 1925 is when he he's still cooking. Opened. The question is, I remember <laughs> they advertised with me when they first started bottling. Don McLemore did, the grandson wow. of Big Bob Gibson, when they first started bottling the white sauce. <laughs> How did he come up with the idea of the white sauce when he was cooking back in the 20s? He made a mistake probably. Doing I know. Some mixed Go ahead. You tell me. Uh, they were adding mayonnaise to keep it from getting dry. Keeping the chickens from drying out. Mm. Yeah, so he said, All right, let's keep it the white sauce. Here we go. I mean, you know. Mm. The Cater Daily just came out with the list breeders voted on the best of everything. What eye care center got the, <laughs> voted the best one? In innovative eye care. Uh, innovative uh, eye care is the right uh, answer. Hey, hey. Yeah, there you go. Innovative eye care. I, that was a gimme right there. That was, a, that was kind of a, a gimme right there. What was, was the right number answer. one real estate company indicator? Marmac. 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 <laughs> no right answer. Ding, 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 ding. Cody, you got to get the hang of this. You know, you know what they got in common? They what? advertise with Cooper and Company. That's right. What was voted the number one heating, cooling, and plumbing company uh, indicator? Air. Indicator. Indicator. Oh. Jackson, Jackson. He's my buddy Keith Jackson over there. Y'all seen their commercial? Oh, yeah, they're hilarious. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty good. Yeah. What landscaping company got voted number one? Hannah's. Hannah. Hannah Landscaping. What's amazing? You know, they right? also <laughs> advertise with Cooper and Cooper. What carpet company got voted number one Freddy? in the case? Superior. Superior Carpet. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> they all saw How advertise easy that was. All right, moving right along. All right, that, that shows you need to advertise with Cooper and Cooper, right. and you'll be We got all number ones over in Decatur. All right, here we go. Here we go. Zach, you don't have oh, to no, leave. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Norfolk no. Southern Railway is blamed an Alabama company that produces railroad ties for failing to use proper protect, protective coating on them. Now they want to dig them all up and redo them. Mm. How many are we talking about? Oh, wow. Railroad ties. They, they didn't put the correct coating on them. How many railroad ties are we talking about? Millions. 175,000. 175,000? That's a good answer, but not nothing, know it all. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> 4.7 million. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's move on to some harder questions. <laughs> Halloween is over. What are trumpkins? Mm. Small the pumpkins, pumpkins you have left that they've been trampled, trampled on? Trumpkins. Trumpkins. Kids for Trump. <laughs> what? Kids for Trump. Well, I'll let you have it. Close enough. Trumpkins are Halloween pumpkins made in the image of our president, there Donald you go. Trump. Trumpkins. I didn't know. Yeah, there you go. I thought he was saying Trump. Was pretty good. Trumpkins. Trump. Zach, pay attention. I need that, to man, that accident yesterday threw your hair off. You need to go see Zeke, man. I need to go see Zeke. over there. <laughs> All right. What has the Church Christ in Alexandria, Virginia done recently? It was established in 1773. Was it wow. good? Wow. What have they done? It ain't good. No, it's not good. No, I don't know. They made the news. It's usually not good. They have <laughs> banned and pulled the plaque out that George Washington, oh. who was a regular member there for 20 years, oh. because he owned slaves. Really? I didn't read that. No Are we know. just going to erase history? He was given his first slave at 11 and 200 acres when his dad died. 
What other famous person also had his plaque removed because he owned slaves? Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Robert Lee is the right Lee. answer. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Right, right <laughs> answer. Okay. <laughs> I get you right. Speaking of presidents, let's go down to. By the way, I got to come out in favor of supporting John Kelly and what he said about Robert E. Lee being an honorable man. Just because he led the Southerners and we lost the Civil War does not mean uh, he was a West Point graduate and yeah. one of the top generals in the nation. So I support him 100 percent, don't you? I do. I think he was an excellent general. He was. Uh, he also was very important in the Mexican-American War. His uh, help, he helped uh, win the war with very few American casualties. See, there you go. I knew we had him up here for something. <laughs> <laughs> George Bush, first president, George Bush. H. What is his, what, is, what does he say is his favorite magician? <laughs> Magician. Who's the other handsy guy? Donald Trump. No, <laughs> magician. I don't know what I'm magician. going on now that I was somebody touched me inappropriately years ago and all that. I'm still trying to think somebody did me that way. I don't know. Really um, What's his favorite magician? And he, he says this. Yeah. And the photographs with the girls. Don't give up. Copperfield. David Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> She says he inappropriately touched her, but her husband didn't seem to mind. It was kind of quite funny. And even Barbara Bush apologized, so that's just the way he is. Oh, wow. David oh, Copperfield. Brad. Get it? Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. Chuck Jason. <laughs> Paul Newman had a prized Rolex watch that he wore for 15 years, was just auctioned off at 13 times its asking price. <clears throat> what was it auctioned off for? 150,000. 17 million. It was the highest, what did you say? 17 million. That is a correct answer. Wow. Bought by Dr. Tite Miller wow. at Innovative yeah. Eye Care. How would you know that? He bought I it. I actually happened to hear that. 17 so million. 17.8 million. That's wow. the most expensive wristwatch. They're going to give you one just like that after you win the state championship. <laughs> Dr. Hartley already told me, don't tell Cody, but we're working on giving him that, uh, that watch. We did on it. Their bid fell way under the goal. Ask him for the price on it. They're side from trade. It was what the stock that more? counted. Oh, here we go. I'll let this one be the last one just for y'all. Hang oh, on. Good. Right now, what are the most expensive shoes ever made? It's a fancy footwear. You know this one, too? It's an expensive shoe. Fanciest shoes. Two, me, two million dollars. Two million dollars. Was I even close? Made out of 24 karat painted leather, 10 18 million. karat That's thread. That's necessary. Huh? That's necessary. There they are right there. 10 million. 15 million dollars. Wow. Right. I'll do one other. I got one other question. Y'all may get on this. Christmas. I was close. Right? Christmas is going like around the frosting. corner right here. A Birmingham based business is now taking. Have y'all seen this? Is taking his business nationwide. Nation Brown, the Christmas Carolers is the name of his business. You can call them, they will send out a full eight, pay, eight people to sing for you. <laughs> well, four to eight. Didn't get a, these are 200 some people <laughs> in 11 cities have signed up to do this, the Christmas Carol. What does it cost? Per hour to have them come to your house or business. Five hundred dollars an hour. <clears throat> Two fifty. That's close, Zach. I'll let you have it. One hundred dollars per singer. Per singer. Per hour. Per, per hour. hour. So yeah, well, wow. first four. That's singers. pretty good. That's a good. I smell a fundraiser for the church. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know that we started thing. that here. We're going to do it with John David Crow. I asked him this morning because he sang Christmas carols. He said, I know as many Christmas carols as you want. We'll, for half of that price and for half of that time, if you come up here, he'll sing to you, you know, during the Christmas season. I'll, well, sing, I'll sing with him. Uh, who won today? Uh, no one wants to. Jason, no. I think that, that, that was a $17 million question. He can enjoy him a good breakfast on the way home today. We'll come back to talk to Coach Crozier in just a second. Y'all hang on. <laughs>
good morning and welcome back on this Wednesday morning. A little bit of rain out there, a little bit of wet roads. Be careful on your way into work. Take a few extra minutes and buckle up for sure. 54 degrees out there, but temperatures going to warm up some today. Not quite as well as tomorrow, but only 67 for your high today. 75 for your high tomorrow with rain still in the forecast. 40% today, 40% tomorrow, 80 the following day, and then 40 the next. So just get used to four days of some rain, but it'll dry out by Sunday. Look at their high temperatures of 78. I know, isn't that wonderful? I love it. I like it cold. I know you do. So Football players. I am the amazing Swami the world's unknown. <laughs> mm. Brought to you by Garner Auctions, Ken Garner. And Coach Growth back with us this week. That's what a day off will do for you, man. You just sleep late, forget all about TV. You know, mm -hmm. He nothing, needed you the know. rest. We know, we, we know where we are on the <laughs> agenda out. now. Yeah. Came, I should have came last week and, yeah. and skipped this skip week. Skipped this week. Getting to have right. some more talk about That's right. Uh, well, let's talk about last well, I mean, week. The, well, this didn't go too good. This no. week. Last week no. didn't, no. You know, we ran into a bus saw. Austin's a uh, heck of a football team. They're, so they're pretty good. They were very good. Number one state, I, I would think they're as, as good as anybody in 7A as well. I mean, they're uh, extremely talented, very well coached, and uh, unless something happens to them, I don't see anybody touching them. I mean, they're, they're, they're the real deal. Yeah, that's what I read and what I, all I know about it. Let's talk about Athens. You're in the playoffs for the first time in many years. What, what do we got yeah. uh, Friday night? We got Huntsville coming in, and Huntsville is a much improved team. They are a 7A playoff team. So uh, I, I think they're very similar to us. They're, they're not the most impressive looking team. Um, kids play extremely hard, very well coached, um, very similar to us. I think. Now, how so do you we're play this game? Up. You don't try to hold anything back. Do oh, you? no, no, <laughs> no. I, and I, I don't know anybody that does. I guess some do. Everybody always asks that. But it's another game. And, you know, football, you only get 10 regular season games. Basketball is going to play 30-something games, and baseball is going to play mm -hmm. – I don't know how many they a bunch. By bunch. Football, you get 10. Uh, so we, we try not to waste any. So, playoff game, you got to travel the first game. Right. After we, you win that one, we come back here, right? Or well, it depends. But there would be a good chance that round two will so be So who you here. got in the first round? You got Clay Chalkville. Clay Chalkville? Yep. And they're, um, Clay Chalkville's 8-1. and one. Ooh. Only loss was to the number one team in their region, who I think is number two in the state. They got uh, lost 34-32. So uh, it gets easier and easier. Yeah, first. how does so, that make you feel going into games like uh, that? You I just mean, gotta that's go kind of what we get in our football. region. So you just going to. Got to do it. You know, great thing about playing Austin is that we're not going to play anybody any better. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, unless you go up to college level. Yeah, it kind of helps you with the speed of the game and all, all that right, stuff. you got senior day uh, tomorrow night. How many seniors you got? We've got 22 seniors. And uh, they they provided some great leadership for us. Very proud of those guys because they were, you know, two and eight as freshmen, two and eight as sophomores, three and seven last year, and now I've uh, been able to get the playoffs. So they've they've really done everything we've asked them to do, and uh, we want to send them out on a, on a good note in their last regular season home game. Well, thanks for coming up. Thanks for remembering us this week. Hey, you got it, man. <laughs> thanks for your great text I got last One time uh, last never, Tuesday morning. That was great. You know, that. We'll see you next week. Hey, I'll be here. Good luck. You might want to text me. I want to. I will. I want to text me. About four o'clock. Or call morning. me. You want me to text you? Sure. Text me. Are you up that early? Uh, well, I was this morning. Okay. Fell asleep oh. on the couch and woke up at four. Okay. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, I'll text you next uh, Wednesday morning. Make sure you get here. All right. You got your phone good. with you. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> All right. We'll take a break. Be right back. Y'all hang on. <laughs> And we are back, Dr. Chris Tite Miller, with me this morning. Innovative Eye Care, how are you? Did great. How are you? Good. We thought we'd do something quiet without Jamie in this interview. We might get a lot. We might. Oh, we might get a lot more. A lot more in. First and foremost, congratulations on winning number Thank you. one eye doctor in Decatur, serving Decatur for over 27 years. So obviously, that would have been the perfect choice. Great staff there too. 
How's that make you feel? Well, it's definitely a team effort and very mm -hmm. humbled. Uh, you know, I just go about and, and treating people and I think of them as, you know, how would God want them, me to treat them? And so um, I try to make sure that I t take care of everybody as an individual and just try to give them the best care that I can. You don't just say that just because you're in business and I know that to be true because mm -hmm. your two children mm -hmm. are incredible. Your son does. Is it Bethel Ministry School? Yes, yeah, does, and your daughter. Is it Bethel Ministry School? <laughs> so they're both in California. wanting mm -hmm. to go into missions, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you actually live that way, too, yeah. and it shows. Oh, so a good you. eye doctor, if you need to get those eyes checked, mm -hmm. and you do need to do that once a year, mm -hmm. why do people not do it once a year? Uh, they just don't think about it, and a lot of times they don't necessarily know what they're missing, mm -hmm. uh, a.k.a. Jamie Cooper. Yes. Um, but yeah, unless you... You know, unless you come in and get tested and we can let you know what you're not seeing or and sometimes people come in and they're doing great. But you just need to make sure that you get those things checked that you wouldn't necessarily know are happening until it's too late. Um, and this is also a good time to start thinking about flex spending accounts because that money is, if you don't use it, you lose it. But you can use it to come get your eyes checked. You can get glasses, contacts, however you want to do that. And we're glad to work with you to use those funds. Number one question or statement rather is when you are, <laughs> there he is now using his glasses to read. The number one statement that is spoken every time, every time is, oh, look at, I can see the trees on I the, see the I can the see trees. the leaves on the trees. That's yeah. right. So they, uh, that being able to read road signs and, you know, they just didn't know what they couldn't see. They just mm -hmm. thought, well, everybody's supposed to see that way. Um, so well, when you're right. headed down 6th Avenue, that's what it looks like. Look for that great big blue yeah. sign. Right. I want to talk about dry eye for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know that we, we talk about that and a lot of people have dry eye mm -hmm. and they don't know that's what they have. Right. And a lot of people think dry eye is allergies mm -hmm. and allergies are um, almost always associated with itching. And we do have a lot of that this time of year. Okay. Uh, it's very seasonal. Uh, but if, you, if you're having burny, scratchy, mm -hmm. Um, water your eyes, that's something that generally is probably going to be the, yeah. um, the, the dry eye. Okay, and it's very important because that's something that can be fixed too. We can definitely if help you. If you get it soon. Right, so a lot of things with dry is that you don't really notice the symptoms until it's right. really much later in the process and it's much easier to treat early on. So definitely encourage you if you have any symptoms with that. Most of those visits are covered by your insurance, so just come in and we'll be glad to take a look at you. When you have the um, oil glands that mm. are not producing enough oil mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be at a certain number and you go in for the eye test and he'll tell you, ooh, you're supposed to be like at what, 100? I want to be over 100. And you're only 40. Yeah. That's it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. And the, those glands aren't working properly unless you re-jumpstart them, then um, they're going to continue to deteriorate and your dryness symptoms are just going to get worse. So say by the time, if that's what's hitting you at 20, 30, 40 years old, by mm -hmm. the time you're 60, 70, how are those eyes going to do well, for you? Well, they're, they're not going to feel very good. They're going to be like uh, sandpaper or a desert. There's just no oils there. And you, unless you're putting drops in every hour or two, you're going to be miserable. And so we've every had... Every hour or two. That's going to be miserable. Yeah, you've had a lot of patients that have mm -hmm. come in, unfortunately, after the fact. And okay. that's what we've had to, to do. So, unfortunately, we can't do anything to help them at that point. So, people need to take that serious, especially mm -hmm. if you're working with computers or uh, kids are on iPads. Mm -hmm. So, get those eyes checked earlier. You said that children should have their first eye exam before they're six. Age, age three. Or age three mm -hmm. and oh use about every year through through okay. school because their vision can change really quickly they uh, and they'll go from one year to the next and they may finish school seeing fun in the spring and come back mm -hmm. in the fall and all of a sudden they can't see the board all right so three years old I'm mm -hmm. constantly saying Maddie can you read this <laughs> Maddie can you read that? <laughs> so we do need to get those children to That's get right. those eye appointments all right, right. well you're taking new new customers mm -hmm. so all you have to do is call the office mm -hmm. you'll talk to either Beth or Mary they're mm -hmm. just lovely too yeah. you guys send out reminders for your mm -hmm. appointments so there's no way to miss it. Just a friendly staff. Yeah, well, thank you. All right. Also, let's talk well, real quick. Trunk, the trunk show. Trunk show is going to be November 14th. We have a couple of new frame vendors coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're just looking for a new style, new look, feel free to come in 12 to 6. Right. We'll have some snacks and giveaways Great. and prizes. Super so. prize, prizes and <laughs> prices, too. Mm -hmm. So pick out those beautiful frames. All right. Innovative Eye Care has it all. Go see the great staff down there. And congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank Always you. good to see you, Doc. Good to see you, too. Well, all right. We're going to head over to Jamie here in just a moment. Now, we have an author in here, Jamie of course, is going to be talking. And this is kind of good. He likes history, but I think he's met someone that knows a little bit more history than him. We'll see. Hey, you owe me for a bunch of stamps. So tell me I've voted a thousand times. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Times. I've got anybody back here. That's right. If you want to see good, it's going to read a book like this. And I noticed USA, USA oh, Today yeah. has even gone to 
larger print the last couple of editions. So they have. Doing that now. All because y'all need to be able to. Jamie Dotson, no relation with the first name. Is that your real name? <laughs> That's my real name, my Christian name. Yeah, it's good to see you. Now, Thank I asked you. him while we were sitting over here listening to Dr. Tyke Miller tell about all the great services he's got. By the way, that's 15 minutes down the road, Highway 31. He, I said, do you still work? Because he saw something. Yeah, I still work. So what do you do for a regular living? I work for the U.S. Army Intelligence Security Command. I work on uh, protecting technology that's uh, advanced. We call it the crown jewels of technology. Interestingly, this area here, or Huntsville in particular, has about as many foreign intelligence officers as the uh, as uh, like DC area or really? Mountain View. Yes, because think about what's here: advanced technology in space, uh, rockets, aviation, drone technology, and even advanced so radars. You're pretty smart. No, no. <laughs> intelligence well, you officer. Must have had one great resume, man. <laughs> it sounds like it. Well, let's talk about what the book. How do you have time to? This is your fifth book? This is my fourth, uh, oh, nonfiction, and uh, I'm writing the fifth in this series, and I have uh, another nonfiction, what's coming out next summer from uh, Schiffer on uh, Pan American flying boats. So, Flying boats. Now, this, this book here is based in uh, like 1936. Yes. Uh, now, is in the Nick 30s. Grant kind of like the Tom Cruise type guy that's in all the Mission Impossible? Is he the, your character? Yes, he's my character, and he's based... Is that your alter ego? No, no, no. He's based upon a guy I worked for when I was in the 82nd Airborne Division. The intelligence officer there, Nick Grant, was uh, not only a pilot, but also a very active intelligence officer, and uh, he was you don't my mentor. You not pay him anything, do you? No, no, no. I saw him last week, though. He's oh. doing well. So retired. he's tickled to death you're using his name in his book. Yes, he, he critiques my work. Uh, he gets a chance to review it before anybody else gets a chance. So, so what is this book about? I mean, it's based before World War II. Right. It's a, a story about uh, a teen who wants to uh, go to college, become an engineer, and he's poor. His family's sort of destitute. Takes a job uh, with Pan American Airways and winds up uh, across the Pacific fighting Japanese spies who are trying to steal U.S. technology as a run-up to World War II. There's a lot of activity in the Pacific uh, between the United States and Japanese uh, agents prior to World War II. Since this is fiction, it doesn't have to be historically correct, so you just make up stuff? Well, it is historically correct. Uh, historical fiction takes actual events, interjects a, a character. Uh, fictional character, yeah, thank character. you, uh, and then tells that story through the eyes of that person. Most of the people in the events in that book are true, actually happened. I just interjected my character to... Uh, Hopefully, make it more interesting than uh, you know facts and figures you might find it. In now you've been writing since what? Oh eight, something like that. Well, no, I started that? writing fiction in 1982. Oh, that I was an ago. intelligence officer working in the theater. Pacific. You look pretty smart. Thank you. Have. I appreciate that. It's all it's all facade. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was writing reports uh, for the United States military, which turned out to be fiction. Oh, got gotcha. you. <laughs> How long does it take to write a book like this? Uh, you know, it depends. Since I'm doing it part time, I actually did that in about nine months, first draft, and you know, I've got to go through a few drafts to make sure it's uh, it's good. Um, after I got out of the military, active duty, I stopped working 65, 70 hours a week, and had to do something with my time other than drive my wife crazy. So you just sit around and come up with stuff to write. I do. Um, I, you know, Homer Hickam, one of my favorite yeah. authors, uh, he had a T-shirt on which I think is great. He says, "Of course, I hear voices in my head. I'm a writer." And that's what happens. My characters speak to me. What is the chances of something like this becoming a movie? Well, there are my first book, Flying Boats and Spies, is off is uh, optioned or rather uh, optioned for a movie. And I went around and uh, did the you know went to Sony, went to Lion Gate, went to a lot of other different places, and you know pitched it. Um, it's an expensive book movie to make. It probably costs about 100 million. And until I sell about 10 million books, uh, they're probably not going to buy it. So you only got a couple million left to sell. Don't you? Uh, yeah. I've got Speaking of that, where can people find this? You can find that on Amazon.com. You can find it on my website, jamiedodsonbooks.com, all one word. And at, uh, as a matter of fact, the Southern Museum of Aviation down in Birmingham, they carry it too. All right, well, great. Thanks for coming up. Tell Thank Homer you, we'd love to have him over here one morning. And, I will, uh, I will. If you ever want to write a story about a good looking guy from New Hope, Alabama, who <laughs> posed for a picture. And uh, you know, <laughs> grew up, you know, always knew he'd make it as a big time TV station owner and morning show host and married to a beautiful woman. Uh, I don't know anybody like that, but I was gonna say, I who could, do you have in mind, I Jamie? could probably come up with some character, fictional character like that. Okay, so does anyway. he have a beautiful wife? Yeah, he's got, uh, yeah, he's got and one. A, and, and a lovely daughter? Yeah, and he's got a uh, beautiful granddaughter, too. Oh, and, okay. Uh, he's well, been very successful. I and, think there's a story there. And, uh, you know, 
But yeah, I know a guy like that. I can set right. you up with that. Anyway, thanks for coming up. Thanks a lot. Appreciate right, we'll it. take a break. Come back up, talk a little Jason Parnell next here. Y'all hang on. Jason Parnell. How long have you been in Athens now? Four years. This Four, I think we met you like the oh first my. time you came in or something. Yeah, it was fairly early. Fairly early. Four years. Yeah. The church yeah. is growing too every day. You like yeah. assembly. Yeah, we've done. The Lord has blessed us. I'll just put it that way. We've, now, where did you come awesome. from to come to Athens? I came from Carthage, Missouri, which is the international home of precious moments, you know, the Bible's yeah. figurines. All right. All right. And um, that's where I was pastoring when I came here. Uh, good. Yeah. Well, what brought you to Athens, Alabama? New Life Assembly of God. <laughs> I came here specifically oh, for the church. Yeah, for specifically that. for the church. And people ask me that question, yeah. you know, how do you get to Athens? How did you get and, here from Missouri? And, um, you know, the church was seeking a pastor, and, and specifically that's how I got here. It was the Lord's, the Lord brought me to Athens, so, so just to meet you. When yeah. you heard just Alabama, to, yeah. it didn't change anything. You had to no, well, honestly, you're my ready. wife is from Dothan. Okay. So I say she's from Peanut L- Capital. Yeah, yeah, she's from L.A. She's from Lower Alabama. <laughs> Matter of fact, she's headed down there Friday to the Peanut Festival. For the, festival? Fe- yeah. for the Peanut it's Festival. going on right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah. You're not going with her? Uh, no, I've, I'm going to be gone to Sundays <laughs> in November. And I figure if I'm, a, if I'm a third gone, I won't be here anymore. It's hard, <laughs> to, te- it's hard to tell them I'm going to have to leave for a peanut festival. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What are, when are your service times over at New Life? Uh, well, we we start breakfast at 8:45. We serve a breakfast every Sunday morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, seriously, really? it's not made to order breakfast. It's not like you can. It's not like a. You so know, you got kind of a buffet going over. Yeah, yeah, continental breakfast type thing. We have we have scrambled for everybody eggs. Everybody or just for scrambled eggs, scrambled sausage. Eggs. No, it's it's for everybody, and we actually do a breakfast with the pastor. And so I have a table set up. So if you want to come meet me, get to know me, learn a little bit more about me, we do that every Sunday. Starts at 8:45. Nice. Uh, breakfast wraps up about 9:15 because Sunday school's at 9:30. And then at 10:30 we have our regular worship service. And then we have 5 p.m. service um, on Sunday evenings. We either do life groups or a regular service. And then uh, on Wednesdays we do a 10:30 a.m. service. Um, yeah, it's for you know for a lot of seniors, but also people that work that need a, need another service. And then at uh, six thirty, we do an evening service on Wednesdays as well. So you do you, you do, do the ten thirty Wednesday service? I do them all. Yeah, that's exactly right. So do here we're them. saying you so don't you give work Joel and Carlisle you work a lot. Over at uh, First Baptist, run for his money because he's yeah. doing all these services. Does later. he do that too? Yeah. So now, how long y'all been type doing a, a person? How long y'all been doing a ten thirty on a? When we started that in January of this year, oh, so that's awesome. so we've been doing it through 2017, yeah. and it went, went real well. We've had I a lot of good. You offended me there in one word. You said the senior citizens <laughs> can come to work. See, personally, I prefer. I don't. We, I can't stay up late Wednesday nights because I got to get up the next day. So we'll have to make one of those. Yeah. Well, I added to that people who have work schedules that oh, okay. you know can't. <laughs> I didn't hear that part. Yeah, yeah. Well, you hear what you Be want, right? <laughs> so how long have you been a preacher? Oh, you know, I see. I, Started when I was about 20, and so I'll actually be 45 this year. So we're talking 25, yeah. 25 years that I've been in the ministry. Yeah. That's and my wife and I just celebrated our 25th anniversary in August. So pretty much most of that time. So you've been married all your life? Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. How many kids you got? I have four children. My oldest is 24 down to 13. I have two kids in the high school here. Oh. So. Yeah, you know, you look awful young to be you have a 24. Yeah, I, I, that's good. A good genetics. You know, people, when they hear I have a 24-year-old, like, really? I'm like, yeah, I do. So. Yeah. What can people <laughs> expect if they're looking for a church home? Of course, we're big members at Lindsay Lane Baptist. Yeah. What can people expect? from you and your staff over at New Life Assembly? I think the one thing that people that are coming to New Life and staying and becoming part of our church body, one thing that they say more than anything is the people. And that's, a you know, it really is, is Athens in general. But some of those people are, are people that have moved in from the outside at some point. But our people are very friendly, very loving, very accepting. And so we hear that a lot. They don't say because the preacher. They don't come just for breakfast. <laughs> they don't. Well, they don't come just for breakfast. Oh, I, we have a new membership class. And so I was asking them, why are you here? Why are you here at New Life? Why are you in our new member class? And um, most of the, all the answers were because of how we felt loved and welcomed. And so we, we try to create that culture at the church, even starting from when you drive on the property and come in, that people are friendly and gen- they're genuine as well. It's, it's, they're very genuine folks, and they just love people. And that's really what is drawing folks to new life and why people are staying. That's important. By the way, if you folks want to know where new life is, it is on Highway 72 West would be the correct address, right? That is correct, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And Facebook and all that stuff. Facebook, yeah, all that good stuff. 
Easy and, and even AthensNewLife.com. We try to promote our website, you know, that way people go out there and find out the information. Well, how would you describe uh, Athens, Alabama? You know, I, I think it's a it's a small town, but it has a little bit of a big feel. It's, it's like where I pastored before, it was in Missouri, and it was about a 14,000 population, but it has the same type of feel. Just a lot of good people here that will gather together around you if you're having a hard time. And so I, I think it's a, a very classic, small town America. Well, the most important question I have to ask you, though, um, are you an Alabama <laughs> fan? Um, you know, I plead the fifth here, <laughs> and let's let's just be honest. I, I hear this word when I tell people who I root for, they'll say, "Bless your heart." Missouri, Missouri. <laughs> so, Bless your heart. Yeah, well, you know, it keeps me out of that fight. But we do we yeah. do a um, an Iron Bowl mission challenge every year. Uh, around the Iron Bowl to raise money for missions, and it's a lot of good. fun. We have a good time yeah. with it. Jason, thanks for coming up. Thanks for becoming yes. part of the ZTV family. It's always a pleasure. You're always a great guy to talk with and always got something good to say. Yeah, well, we'll appreciate you guys. Tell your Wednesday wife, enjoy morning. that peanut. Get us a bowl of peanuts and bring them back. Hey, I'll tell her to bring some up. up. All right, we'll take a break. We'll see you. We're supposed to have a motorhome up here tomorrow morning. Thanks yes. to Drew over at uh, Southern, RV Wholesale. Southern so we'll RV. find out if we're going to have all that. I'll let you all know in the morning, bright and early. See you all. Bye-bye.